Hello and welcome to Sue Finley Designs. Today's video is going to look at how I created this piece using crushed glass, resin, spray paint and mineral turpentine. It will go into showing you how I created the lacing and the different effects between the colours and basically just give you a, a quick rundown on how I've done that and how I apply resin uh, sorry, spray paint to the resin and how I also use it to add highlights at the end of the pour. So for this getting started I actually use spray paint to mark out the design that I'm going to use. And this is where I'm going to place the crushed glass. Now I'm using a, a silver chrome paint. And the reason for this is I'm going to pour clear resin on the top and I want the silver to show through the crushed glass so you'll get some sparkle and shine and things through the stones or the glass I should say. And what I'm doing here also is I'm spraying the edges silver. So I'm giving the edges a base. I'm not actually going to allow a lot of the resin to run over the sides, but any that does run over, I'm not going to. Um, I'm not trying to get the whole colours going over the side. I actually want the silver to show through. So that's why I've just spray painted the edges as well. Now there's no need for me to spray paint the whole piece. It's just wasting spray paint. So I'm just literally using that to mark out. The design and to do the edges and as I mentioned I'm just pouring some clear resin on the top. Now I'm actually mixing the resin as I go in the different colours so I'm starting off with a pot of clear and I'm adding colour to it as I go. Now this is the, the crushed glass that I use, uh, I get that from Ikea, it's quite inexpensive and it's, it's really nice crushed glass because it has, not only is it clear, it has mirror pieces in there as well. So you get a really, really nice shine and light bouncing off this and it does really give a really nice touch to it. And then using a stick, I'm just spreading the stones a lot, out a little bit to fill the area of the, the resin. Now you can go as wide as you want on this, but because the way I'm, I'm doing this, I'm doing it a little bit like a geode style that I didn't want too thick. This is the only bit of powdered pigment I'm using, the rest of it is spray paint and this is from Artie Sue and it's the black. Now this black has actually got um, a bit of metallic in it so you get a bit of a shimmer. You know you can't see it in the video um, but you do get a nice, a nice finish on this black. So all I'm doing here is I'm just outlining the stones and I've put it quite neck close to the stones because I want the black to creep into the stone so you'll see bits of the silver as well as the black leaching around the stones and creating a nice effect. Just give that a quick zap with the heat gun just to pop any bubbles as we go. Now once I've done that I realised it needed a few more stones in certain areas because it was looking a little bit thin so I just go back over and just pour some more stones. I'm not worried that I'm pouring over the black and things, it's because the colour leaches through anyway, but it was just making sure that there was no thin spots with the stones. For the white I'm using White Knight Squirt Prime Paint, which is just a white, it's a high gloss white. Now this is the first time using white spray paint in the resin, so this was a bit of an experiment with that. I actually quite like how that um, turned out. Now, I don't know whether it's because I used the white spray paint or whether because it's quite warm out the temperature starting to warm up here in Australia is why the white started curing quite quickly. I think it is actually a combination of the two. So it's um, I noticed that as I went through and went back over using the mineral turpentine to spread it that the white was starting to cure a lot quicker than the rest of it. So bear that in mind when you're using white spray paint. 
Now for this one, I'm using sil the, the same silver chrome spray paint I used for the background, but this time I'm mixing it directly in the resin. I'm just eyeballing it. I'm just you, you only need a tiny amount of spray paint for this because the pigment is so good. Um, and so just mixing it, I just use the stick to just see how thick that's looking because I don't want it to be transparent. And you get a really nice um, effect with this silver spray paint. You'll see that it um, it actually works very similar to silver um, pigments. So you you get quite a lot of depth in it. And um, so if, if you don't have silver pigments in that, the silver spray paint is definitely a very good substitute. So just using a stick, I'm now just going to spread that about a little bit because I want quite a thick band of silver here, so I'm making sure that spreads out. Plus, I don't want to have to mix um, more than I need to because I've, I've calculated I need around about 1.1 litres of resin for this board. So I don't want to be mixing too much. In the end, I actually used 1.2, so it wasn't too bad. Um, but, yeah, so just by spreading it about a little bit, you you make it go a little bit further. So for this one, again, it is the black pigment. And you don't need to go really close to the, the previous line because the, the way the resin runs, it will run into each other. So you can actually leave a bit of a gap between colours. And then just using the stick, you can just use that to sort of push and fill any holes that you have between the gaps, between the colours, I should say. Now, other than the initial shape, I don't have any specific plan of what colours I'm sitting with next. I'm just working as I go and sort of getting a feel for what I think will work next to it. So, like I say, I've not planned this out as such. I'm just letting it go with the flow and seeing what I think will work next next to it. And because this is a monochrome, I did actually want a lot of silver in this. That's why there's a lot of silver a touch of black and just a small amount of white. Now you could actually leave this if you wanted now and just let the resin do its thing, whether you wanted it to run into each other or just use a stick to sort of blend it slightly. So if you actually were to run a stick through it ever so lightly, you would get a little bit of lacing happening between the colours and you know it would it would still be a nice piece like this you can see the white and the grey and silver on the right hand side how that's leaching together but what I've done now is I've actually gone on and used some mineral turpentine from diggers and I've just poured a small amount in the white cup there and now using a stick and now going to pull that through. It was at this point that I realised that the white had actually started curing a bit because the it wasn't moving very much. Now I could have done this earlier, I could have um, done the min mineral turpentine between the layers, uh, the, the sections, so I could have done one between doing the black and the white, done the, the turpentine, and then between the grey and the white, etc, etc. Um, but during the winter you get a longer working time, obviously in the summer you don't so much. So it's just, you just work with what you've got so you know whether you're in a, a warmer climate at the moment or a cool climate just work with the temperatures and that that you've got but either way you're still getting interesting effects now as you can see as you run the stick through the color and um, between the, the the two separate colors you'll see that the mineral turpentine actually starts moving the resin and it starts making it spread between each other and you'll get a bit of lacing happening and some really interesting effects and um, shapes which are quite organic and quite natural you don't have to do a great deal with it because all I'm doing is just running the stick between the, the two colours and then just letting the mineral turpentine do its thing and as you can see it's spreading about quite nicely Now one of the main reasons why I like to use mineral turpentine is that although it causes the resin to move and creates interesting shapes, when it evaporates, 
it, you're actually left with quite smooth resin. So you're not letting, unlike silicone where you get, you do get the same interest in shapes and movement, you're actually left with divots and things in the resin, whereas mineral turpentine actually evaporates and leaves you with a nice smooth finish. Now this piece, I did end up with a few divots in it, but this is because one of the cups that I'd used previously, I'd not realized I'd used it for silicone and um, for when I was doing some molds and I hadn't cleaned the cup properly so there was little bits of silicone ended up in the piece and I did end up with some um, divots in it however it's not detracted from the piece at all and it's actually you know added a bit of extra interest so you can work with it and allow it to do its thing and then just makes for a unique piece and rather than get upset over it just go with the flow and say you know what that's part of the piece it's meant to be like that it's um it's what makes it unique and, and that's the way i like to work with the resin is like let it do its thing and sometimes you get bubbles in it sometimes you get things happening that's not supposed to be happening but just go with the flow because it doesn't actually change alter the fact that it's an interesting and, and unique piece so what i've done here is I've actually put some of the white spray paint into a cup and I'm now using this to create some shape and interest in areas where I felt it was a little bit bland. So by spraying some spray paint into the cup and using a stick you can drag it across the surface of the piece and although you can't see too well here, when you see close-ups you'll see the there's little bits of lacing and interesting effects happen. Now the spray paint will actually sit on the top of resin and it doesn't sink or anything like that so adding it when it's still wet you get nice shapes. Now you can do what I'm doing here where you're doing the flat edge of a stick but you can also use the side of a stick and just get it to run through the resin and drag it through and create different shapes and get it interactive with the resin more so you can play around with this and, and see what kind of interesting shapes and design you yourself can get and i've also put some silver spray paint into a cup also and i'm just working the two between them so I'm dragging it through the white as well so the, the two lots of spray paint are interacting with each other along with the resin and the mineral turpentine so by working with both the turpentine and the, the spray paint you can get really good effects with that also and i'll show that in another video well i hope you enjoyed this video and it's given you some ideas on how to use mineral turpentine and spray paint in your pieces as always the List of, uh, list of items will be in the description and if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and you better still subscribe to my channel. Okay thank you for watching until next time goodbye.